Hello. We're just waiting for Doc Swiner to join us so we can talk about all the stuff that is happening right now. There she is. Hi, Doc Swiner. How are you? Um, let me see if I can join you. Hello, hello to everybody that's joining us. Hey. Hey, girl. How are you? Good. I'm good. We have a special guest that wants to say hi real quick because he... Ooh. Hi. <laughs> I've been told that's all I can do, so I'm just going to say hey. But he's so entertaining. He always adds so much to the live. He's so I was going funny. To try to He's, he adds his own <laughs> special DC flair, really. Is that you on a shirt? Why not? <laughs> the sad part is that the faces are the same size. So you got this one here. Hi, Tamisha. Uh, hey, nice. y'all. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rick Swiner. He is super entertaining, isn't he? He's yes. the funniest. The fu I just imagine your household is just like laughter all the time. It usually is. I'm just like most of the, most of the time. I'm just shaking my head, like you're stupid. Like what are you doing? <laughs> that is accurate. Hey Tracy, like, like, that's accurate. I love that y'all are. I love. I love that he is so consistent. Like ever since I've known him, he's been exactly the same. Well, come come and sit down behind me since she's uh giving you so many compliments. Right, Go ahead, right, sit right. on the bed. I wanted oh. to be here to work out. She was like, no, because I'm trying to tell the real news and blah, blah, blah. We, got real, we have important stuff to talk about. Go and ahead, you're gonna, she, I think she's scared you're going to be you're injecting right your ridiculousness into the conversation. You know how you do it. You know, today, I'm just going to be a fan. I'm going to go and log in. <laughs> Okay. I'm just going to watch the chat. So I'll Tracy let you said guys... she's here for Rick. Tracy said I'm here for Rick. <laughs> there you go, Tracy. My girl, good luck. Yeah, I'm going to log in. I'm just going to be a bystander today. And okay. then we'll talk later, Karen. We'll do our own thing at some point. Okay, that's Because I have to be full on ignorance. It doesn't need to be anything real important. I told right. him I'm trying to hit. I, I, I want to give the hard hitting news and facts. The facts. And he's gotta... just like. I wanted to dance. I was yeah. like, <laughs> you want to be all up in the videos. Oh, all yeah. in the videos. <laughs> oh, right. gosh. Okay. All right. Like, there are literally tears coming out of my eyes just from that little bit of Rick interaction. Um, we're supposed to be talking about serious stuff here. I know. I know. Oh. That's why I told I said, you have to leave. I have to be serious. He's like, okay. <laughs> oh, like, <laughs> mm, serious face. Serious face. Okay, let me get let me get it back together. Hey, Doc Swiner, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing okay. I mean, you know, tired and, you know, it's kind of rainy and blah, but, you know, I'm, I'm okay today. I'm okay. okay. Well, there's been <laughs> how about a you? a lot going on i mean it's it's yeah. it's interesting because it's like you don't really know where to focus there's so much to focus on obviously um the things that are happening in this country and continue to happen that affect people who look like you and me and your kids and my kid and you know so that's stressful and in the midst of yeah. all of that it's like the world seems to either a have forgotten about COVID-19 or B has just gotten so bored with it that we've moved on. Yeah. We've moved on. It's, it's like, it's not even a thing. Like that's so May, 2020. We're not even <laughs> focusing on that bad anymore. Day. <laughs> so bad day. So, so last no. season. Um, mm -hmm. So I wanted, I'm glad that we didn't talk last week. Cause I feel like there's a lot more going on this week um since we've gotten further into our phase two of our reopening um mm. people are acting a damn fool that's just my my <laughs> non-medical opinion that's your assessment, that's my your assessment. people i mean i feel like you could say it better because you're a doctor i feel like there's a better <laughs> medical terminology for it but my terminology is people are out here acting a damn fool um that's what i say when i talk to my patients i'm like you know, we have some damn food out here. It's not, you know, they're like, yes, keep it real. <laughs> Listen, I mean, it's it's so crazy. Did you see that video from WRL um, from Friday night in Glenwood South? Where they were partying. Girl. 
It was like home. I missed it. I it missed was, it. I'm jealous. I know. I wanted to be there too. Missed it. But I was um, like busy trying to live and keep my kid alive. So <laughs> I uh I didn't go. Imagine that. No, Imagine okay, that. we sound judgy. We sound really judgy, sound don't judgy. we? Okay. But I um, mean <laughs> So yeah. I, I wish I could have been out there just with swabs, just galore. Me and my clinic, just like bam, 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 hitting people at the bar, in the bathroom, swab, swab, swab. Um, you know, we'll, so we'll see. We'll see in the next well, one or so I, weeks. We'll see. And listen, I don't even think it's a an e- it's even a we'll see because we are seeing, right? We are seeing. We yeah. are seeing, we are seeing the after effects of, I think it's probably several things that we're seeing now as I, as I put on my medical hat, <clears throat> let me explain Here's to you what we're seeing. Okay. <laughs> what we're seeing is <laughs> we're, we're seeing, um, of course the, the reopening of our state mm-hmm. and other states. Um, I think that we are seeing, uh, the wider availability of testing. We're seeing some of that. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. I think that we are seeing. Some of the after effects of Memorial Day. Absolutely. I, That's where I, we are now. Yeah. And I think we're seeing boredom. I think we're seeing boredom. I think it's kind of like all of that kind of just mushed together. Is that a, is that a medical term? Mushed? Mush together? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, cool. That's 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 what I feel Cocktails like. Cocktails in the morning? Dr. Brooke, what you talking about? Are you having yeah. brunch? Well, no. So she's like cocktails with Karen. Actually, um, I'm, oh, oh! I'm drinking. I'm drinking water, Dr. Jackson, with a lime in it. That's it. I, I'm sorry. Mine is coffee. Mine is but, coffee. But technically, it's not morning anymore. So, coffee with that? Karen. Coffee with Karen. So, yeah. um, so what do you, what is it that you think we're seeing? What What do you think is going on? You're absolutely right. All of those things combined. Um, you know, I, I saw a lot of posting about you know clearly the protests and the demonstrations are happening, etc. Um, I don't think we've seen that effect yet, because, again, it takes one to two weeks for those those numbers to change and for those viruses to to multiply and show up in the blood and all that. So, um, you know, be safe out there for multiple reasons. Be safe if, you're, if you are going to demonstrate and protest, which thankfully I have seen a lot of footage. The majority of people are wearing their masks, are wearing their gloves. It's kind of hard to socially distance when you're doing um, those types of things. But um, just remember that it's it's not over. It's not over. We have a long way to go. We've become more adjusted. Mm-hmm. We've become more used to it. You know, so mm-hmm. I don't think the ones of us, those of us who are practicing the distancing. I mean, clearly, yes, we, we are getting a little frustrated, a little uh, feeling kind of caged in a little bit. But, um, you know, we, we have been very slowly re- reintroducing social activities and very very small amounts small groups <clears throat> of those but we call them our our i think there was a new york times article that called it like your quarantine bubble mm-hmm. you know those trusted individuals that we have a pact with uh i like to say <laughs> my vernacular is we go together we go so together. this is mm-hmm. we have committed to us mm-hmm. and we're not gonna hang out with a bunch of other groups we're gonna hang mm-hmm. out with each other Mm-hmm. We're going to make sure we're checking temperatures and wearing face masks and sanitizing everything. So we've been slowly introducing that piece, but I don't see us going out to a restaurant anytime soon, particularly mm-hmm. with the kids. Yeah. Um, we're not going out. You know, I haven't been to a march. I haven't been to a demonstration, but I've, I've demonstrated in other ways mm-hmm. my support for the movement. Um, and you just have to be just be smart. Your pod. That's right. It's called a pod. Yes, That's your right. pod. I like mm-hmm. it. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting, and and you start to feel, as I venture out more, I start to feel like I'm crazy. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at people, and I'm like, y'all crazy. But then I'm like, is it me? Because I went, um, and I even posted about this, I think, on Twitter. Friday night, I got takeout, and I did, like, the little curbside thing. And as I'm sitting there waiting for them to bring my food to my car, I'm looking at all the people at the restaurant um, – that I went to, there was a huge patio area with tons of outdoor seating. And then there was like everybody waiting outside to be able to get a table inside. And there was not one mask outside of the staff who worked there. There was not one mask. And there were so, there had to be 60 people out there. And I was like, Uh, okay, so I'm in my car wearing a mask for when I have to interact mm -hmm. with this curbside person. Mm Mm-hmm. 
and y'all just i closed my vent too you know that little recirculating air thing right 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 right, right. i might like, even think about that that's smart that's smart I'm that's get, smart i'm not sucking in any of the other air and dr dr brooke just asked if i would get on a plane absolutely not not and unless there was an emergency i would not get on a plane right now i you know we are on the far end of being as cautious and precautious as possible. We we admittedly are on the far end. I think Karen is probably on the end with us, so she can join our pod. But um, but from my, you know, you just have to be you just have to be careful. It's not it's not done. It's not over. We'll talk. I think Karen wants to talk about some of these uh, you know problematic, misleading things that were said uh, from the WHO. Um, just to you know even further complicate things but it's not right. over folks so stay tuned so mm -hmm. um i see you oh, nicole that's right uh, so let's 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 jump into it because um you know i did try to go to the black farmers market event in durham yesterday yes. right yeah and so and i shout out to my friends it. that run that you know i've been hyped about it i've been talking about it on yes. the air i posted it on our yes. website and I was like, okay, okay, I'm, I'm gonna get out there early. I'm gonna get out there mm -hmm. early before it's too many people. Um, but see, the way my melanin is set up, I was kind <laughs> of on CP time, so I did get out there as early as I anticipated. Because you were too happened. late. I was too mm -hmm. late, girl. Mm -hmm. It was the line was all the way around the mutual building. It was all the way around, and I was, I was, I was like, okay. If I were willing to stand in this line, is it safe for me to stand in the line if I'm surrounded by a group of people who are wearing masks and I'm wearing my mask? Is it safe to stand in the line? I was like, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't talked yeah. to anybody about this. Like, how does this work? Do, do, would you yeah. feel safe doing that, even standing around a group of people who have on masks? No. And, I, you know, shout out to my friend, you know, I have uh, Crystal Taylor and Joshua Gunn and some of my favorite people put on the event. And I'm I'm very, very happy that it was successful because I think nearly all the vendors sold out. So definitely support, you know, black farmers, et cetera. Um, mm -hmm. I think, you know, they did the best that they could. I haven't talked directly to them since since yesterday, but I think they did the best that they could in terms of trying to limit the amount of people in at once they you know definitely enforced wearing your mask mm -hmm. uh customers were not allowed to touch the items um unless you know it was being handed to them for purchase mm -hmm. they were sanitized so you know they did their best um i definitely fought and and wanted to go out and support but then once i started seeing the pictures of people wrapped around the buildings i said it's going to be really really hard that makes it more difficult um, to be socially distant with all those people in line. So we decided against it, but I, you know, I support, I support yeah. the cause. Uh, yeah, definitely. So. But do you know, it I make think, a difference mm -hmm. if you're outside from a medical standpoint? Do you think it's different if you're outside? Well, it has to be different if you're outside, which is why the governor was like, y'all can do church outside versus inside. You know, I guess there's more wind, more circulation. More right. So theoretically, it's safer, you know, I can't give you numbers. Mm -hmm. um, it's safer, but it's not 100% safe outside versus inside. So yes, the more ventilation, air, you know, things have uh, uh, room to go up, you know, versus you being stuck within four walls, you know, so right. when we, we had, you know, one, two, three, four friends over for cocktails on Saturday. We did it outside. Mm -hmm. um, we six feet away from each other. Mm -hmm. um, and so, and we tried not to touch the same utensils when we were getting things. I was the server. I was right. the only person to, you know, touch food and touch drinks. So do the best that you can, but still please just make sure that it, nothing is 100%. Nothing is guaranteed. Nothing. Okay. So yeah. let's talk about this. Wear your mask. Wear your mask. Amen. Please, people, please wear your mask. Mm -hmm. um, um, Don't be selfish. Don't be selfish. Uh, let's talk about the asymptomatic thing, because uh, the WHO came out with a report that made it seem like asymptomatic people were not as big of a concern. And then they were like, oh, we didn't use our words. Our best. Right. That's so, exactly what happened. Yeah, I mean, that's basically what I was like, like who, wrote, who wrote the report? What, what, what are oops. you doing? Oopsie. It was the shrug emoji. Yeah. Shrug emoji. Shrug emoji. Right. So we do need to be concerned about asymptomatic 
and yes. pre-symptomatic people. That is a right. thing. Right. Okay. So pre-symptomatic is now a new word. Right. Because you can almost assume, and you should, it's probably safest to assume that everyone is an asymptomatic carrier. They just don't mm -hmm. know that they have that that they have the antigen yet. Right. Um, and pre-symptomatic means, no, I don't have it, I don't have it, I don't have it, and then boom, my test turns positive, or boom, my fever right. happens. So like, <laughs> <laughs> right, because you don't start having symptoms theoretically. I was told the cough doesn't happen until after a fever, after about three to five days after a fever. You may not know you have a fever if you're not checking your temperature. Right. Um, so assume everybody has it. And and what I've been, been doing and I, what I've been debating, um, you know, with friends and, and patients about is just everybody get tested. Just everybody get tested. Right. So. You know, there are pros and cons. There are false positives, false negatives, but at least it's something. It's something versus okay, nothing. Okay, but if I get tested, if I get tested, how often then should I get tested? Because just because I test negative now doesn't right. mean this time in July that I'll be negative, right? Yes. I, I would base a decision on your, you know, how high risk of a, of a, working or living exposure situation are you in? So for me, because I'm potentially in front of sick people at least three days a week in, in practice, um, I'm testing every two to three weeks. Okay. Some, you know, sometimes I'm doing the swab, sometimes I'm doing the blood because I'm just that, that you know, worried about it. Right. Um, and yes, yeah, so yes, uh, to answer Cameron, yes, if you are tested once, yes, you can retest and you can retest as often as you want. Um, I, I do every two to three weeks because that's about how long after exposure your test can show up positive. So that's what I've been doing. That's what makes my family feel better. Um, you know, so again, we don't know much about this thing. Right. So I am acting only on the, the knowledge that I have. I try to read the most up-to-date CDC information and guidelines. I follow the North Carolina numbers and see what the the graphs and the waves are doing and that's what i'm basing my new lifestyle on this is a new lifestyle it is new lifestyle i think for all of us um so our numbers are not looking great i was um i think my boss j tech is on here i was telling j tech that i saw the other night like we made it onto the like abc world news is one of the states that was like a hot spot and i know that the triangle in particular there is a there are a handful of counties, including those in the triangle that are on the White House's radar for places to watch that are concerning. Um, so our numbers are going up. Is that just because uh, we are getting tested more? Is that because of contact tracing? Like, why Why are our numbers looking so crazy above and beyond people? all the people partying in Glenwood South on Friday night? Right. So... Some of the data is skewed because more of us are getting tested, which is a good thing because we need to know. Mm -hmm. But the majority of the concern comes from those that are actually sick. Mm -hmm. So there are sick, infected, hospitalized people that okay. are causing the numbers to go up. So it's not just because we're getting tested. Um, okay. Because that, you know, they, they, they can separate those numbers when they okay. look at the, the graphs. Um, this is actually people who are sick with symptoms and are infected. Okay, so um, can I play conspiracy theorist with you for a second uh -huh. from, a, from a doctor's standpoint? So uh, in the midnight hour when I cannot sleep, I calm myself by reading Twitter, which is the worst thing to do, right? Um, so then that's when I get bombarded with all kinds of information that I absolutely don't need to have at 2 a.m. when I'm trying to sleep. And so I saw, uh, I don't know if it was a congressman or a senator, but somebody from Arizona talking about the Arizona numbers and how Arizona has had 4,000 new cases um, in the past 72 hours and that Arizona is on its way to becoming a New York 2.0. Oh so, so that was scary, which did not help me go to sleep at all. I don't live in Arizona, but I'm just like, oh, that's terrifying that the numbers are jumping like that. So the conspiracy theorist in me is like, OK, our government is not being run by doctors, right? I mean, doctors can mm -hmm. offer input and information and guidance. But at the end of the day, the people who are in charge are not doctors. Is it possible that there's like some crazy idea 
that, listen, we cannot afford to shut this economy down. And now we're at the point where if they get it, they get it. Look, we did the shutdown thing. We did. We tried. They told us to flatten the curve. We did that. Now everybody can't go broke and can't be starving. So good luck, y'all. Is that a theme? Listen, this is the land of the free, right? We are independent, free will. People are, there are some people, we have the reopened people that are here in North Carolina Mm -hmm. that feel like it is, you know, against their civil rights for uh, for us to be told to stay at home and be safe at home. Mm -hmm. Listen. Do what you're gonna do, <laughs> right, Tamisha? You every took the man, words out of it. Every, every man, man for, for himself. himself. Listen, okay. listen. All right. I don't know. I wish we would So, so what's probably going to happen? Um, and I don't want to just preach fire and brimstone because, you know, again, I have I see good things happening. I see people wear. I'm in Durham. I see people wearing their masks. When I go to the grocery stores, for the most part, I see people doing social distancing correctly. And I have people that are, you know, doing all the things that we're supposed to be doing. So I see it. It it is happening. Um, And I will also say the doubling rate. We also look at, um, hey, Dr. Kanisha, not only do we look at how many people get sick, but we look at how, how frequently the number doubles. That number has slowed. That number has slowed. So people aren't getting sick as as fast as they used to. And the numbers aren't doubling as quickly as they used to. So we are still slowing it down a bit. It has gone up since the holidays, since reopening. But there's still some control that we can have on this thing. But what's probably going to happen is Governor Cooper is going to put us all back on restriction. If those numbers keep going up, 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 he has been very clear that he's not playing with y'all. <laughs> he has. He he's has not playing been. with y'all. And he's yeah. going to dial that those phases right back on down. So then you're really going to be mad that, Yo. you know, you can't do what you want to do. So just, you know. Yeah. Dr. Kanisha is in Houston, and they have seen just traumatic things happening. So she works in the hospital. She says longer ICU stays and hospitalizations. People are coming off of vents, but having major complications coming off and recovering. So just be, just be careful. Be careful. Listen, do you know how mad these reopened North Carolina people will be if they put us back on lockdown? Do you understand how crazy it's going to be? People are going to lose their minds. They're going to lose their minds. Y'all just, yes, just be patient. Be patient. Why not wear a mask? Why not? Does it hurt? It's against my rights or something. <laughs> I, I don't really I think, know. I think I, that's I think that's the argument. It's against my rights. Because my grandma said I should <laughs> I should do what I want to do. <laughs> right, exactly. Uh, Why not wear a mask? Yeah, oh, thank hair you, boo. Is all, it's always late. Autumn always Joy said always. my hair is late. Listen, this is my like what six, seven weeks? How many, how many weeks have we been of of do it yourself? This is DIY. Girl, you don't need to go yeah. to no hairdresser. You good. You now good. listen, okay. Can we keep it real? Can we keep it real? So yeah. Rex Minor is here. So uh so I am talking to my stylist mm-hmm. about reopening. We we talked about this two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um the funeral homes will never close. Ooh, that's morbid. Um oh Autumn Joy. Y'all please don't listen to Autumn Joy. She's doing very silly. Don't don't listen to Autumn. That's, She's that's, very silly. That is generally yes, my am, philosophy. She said the I am covered in the blood as well. Thank you, Jesus. She said she's but covered the Lord, in the oof of Jesus. That's what she said. That sounds the exactly Lord right. told me. The Lord told me that some, you know medicine and science that there is some validity to that. Mm-hmm. So protect yourself. That's what the Lord told me. But anyway, uh, as far as going to my hairdresser, um, now I I have privilege as a physician. I have access to some things that others may not, but and I appreciate well, we, you acknowledging your privilege. Thank you, privilege, Dr. Schleiner. You know that's that's a buzzword. You have to it you is. have to acknowledge it to understand what to do next. Yes. So I'm talking to her, and she has. I have already gotten her tested once. Okay. She's going to test again. So we again we go together. Okay, you go. So together. we have we have committed that she's going to get tested, and I'm going to get tested this week. Okay. She's going to close on Friday after sanitizing her salon suite. Mm-hmm. She's not going to have anybody else in there. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. She's not going anywhere on the weekend. I'm not going anywhere this weekend. I'm saying I need to make sure that's the truth. <laughs> I'm not going but Monday morning, 6 a.m., I'm the first one, as long as our tests are negative, I'm the first one in her chair. Okay. I don't bring any stuff. <laughs> she said the oof of Jesus also just as a thing. Is that a new thing? What church? What church is that from? That's the, that's the Church of Oz. Uh, that's, that's, it's one of those PG <laughs> County churches. You know how they do in PG County. Oh, you know. I see. You know. I yeah, see. yeah, yeah. Um, but no, but we are talking together. We are forming a plan together that makes the both of us. Uh, she's she's being just as OCD as I am. Okay. That makes the both of us feel comfortable. So I'm getting tested. She's getting tested. I'm the first one in her chair after she. It's been sanitized and sat for days. Nobody else is going there before me. We're masking up, and that's what we're going to do. Wow. That, that is, makes me feel comfortable. That right? is a lot of privilege that you're using there. I'm pri- proud but of you. you know what? If you ask, ask your people, ask your nail techs, your dentist, your hairstylist, have you gotten tested? You know, could you have been exposed? I know you feel well, but could you be asymptomatic? Let's wear these masks or let's let's reschedule for a different day. Right. Um, be the first person in the, in the chair if you can. Mm-hmm. First thing in the morning instead of being the last the last patient, the last right. client. Um, make it work for you or don't go. OK, unless it's an emergency. Unless it's, it's an emergency. And I, usually most hair situations are not emergencies most sometimes they are sometimes sometimes they are i gotta you know what and i'm thinking this i'm thinking about this i gotta take my baby to um the eye doctor this week because he's been having headaches we missed our regular checkup which was supposed to be in march i need to have his eyeglass prescription checked and so i'm like okay that's a need you know that is to me that's a need i cannot have my baby head hurting so <laughs> and he just said uh, lies hair is an emergency hair is an emergency girl you should mm, look i could do a whole nother instagram live on my hair emergency last weekend as a matter of fact we talked you were like are we doing this i was like girl no absolutely not i'm like get it hey take care of it. i'm good yes. take care of your hair mm-hmm. um autumn said honestly i feel like asking people if they feel sick is the new way of asking if they have yes. an std but here's the thing yes. i yes, it like is. i can't trust I could never just trust somebody to say they had an STD. Why would I trust them to say, oh, I don't feel sick. I haven't been sick. I'm totally fine. Everybody around me. I, like, I feel like that's not enough. I haven't been anywhere. Really? Because I saw your Insta stories. Right. Really? Right. <laughs> so I just, I can't, I don't even think that's enough. I want, I, even STDs, it's like, oh, for real, well, I'm going to need you to get that blood test real quick. Thanks. Yeah. God bless yes, you. Yes, yeah. Cam Bryn, follow Autumn Joy, but just don't listen to anything she says. Okay. Yes. Yeah, I love her do dearly. Yeah, I love her dearly. God bless her. Yes. Bless her She's heart. My bless her heart. So, <laughs> so taking my baby to the eye doctor, do I need to call the ophthalmologist and be like, we need to be there first thing in the morning? Do mm-hmm. I need to do a temperature yeah, check on the ophthalmologist? Yeah, they will. They will. So, are you, is it through Duke, UNC? Um, or private? It's private. It's private. Okay. Yeah. So, when the, when we our staff comes into our building, we check everybody's temperature. Um, and as soon as the patients get in, they mask up. So you know, we try our best. And if anyone's sick or has been sick or potentially exposed, we make them stay at home. So most medical practices now have their protocols set. So I think it is okay. <laughs> um, I think it is okay to go into your doctor's offices if it's essential. Right now, you know, we're they're doing the best that they can. They're not, we're not seeing, thankfully, knock on wood, you know, massive outbreaks at medical clinics, right? We're seeing most of the, the massive numbers coming from nursing home facilities. God oh bless. Oh my gosh. Did you see, we had a gathering for more Memorial Day, small family gathering. Everybody swore they were good. Boom. Five days later, six of us have COVID. See? Mm. Was that autumn? God no, bless that you. wasn't autumn. That was somebody else. I, I hope, thought that was autumn. I hope, I hope everyone's doing okay. I'm sorry I to hear really that. I really do. I really hope you all are okay. That's that that's scary. And those are the stories that are terrifying. Right. It's like everybody says they're good and it just takes one asymptomatic or pre-symptomatic person to set it off in a bad way. Yeah. So Father's Day is coming. Um, I pray that the majority of you are just staying home virtually talking to your dad. You know, dads are older than than their children for the most part. Um, 
and are higher risk, please just send daddy a card, send him a, a package in the mail, okay? Say hi to him. Say, I'll come and see you after all this is done. I'm Drop something off at the porch. Um, if you are getting together, again, commit to your pod. Right. Keep it, if you can keep it 10 or less, commit to your pod, have something outside, everybody wear a mask. Don't share utensils. Everybody get, you know, one, maybe one person is kind of the server um, or you're gloved. Just, you know, just keep it as as strict as you realistically can. Um, well, Autumn's dad is good because she got him CMOS for a couple weeks ago. So he doesn't have anything to worry about, apparently, because, you know, Autumn swears that she had COVID-19 back in January, but she took some CMOS and she was good. Did you get tested? Autumn, did you get tested? Come to my office and get tested. Oh, yeah. Put it on your IG story. I think that sounds like a plan. That sounds like a plan. How are you? Are you Autumn, you've feeling? been, because Autumn's been here, there, in other regions. Like, she, come on. Come to the office. Come to Durham Family Medicine and get those antibodies. Tell you did. Oh, good. Ask her how long Please. ago it was. Ask her when it was. Ask her. How Ask long her was it, Autumn? What were the, can you tell us what the results were? <laughs> come, Autumn. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I oh visit yeah she's in florida y'all <laughs> oh i am not she's not gonna give me an anxiety attack today i'm not doing no, it no don't do I'm it not doing it well this is this has been good this has been helpful um I, I always have to ask you the same questions you're still sanitizing your groceries yes okay um are you still stripping down before you walk in the house Yes. Still doing all of that? Okay. Um, yes. How do you feel about school? Oh, you ask me this all the time. You need to start with this question. I know. You always end with this question. So, so my kids are in a charter school, which means they kind of get to do their own thing, but they loosely follow the public school um, rules and regulations. You want me to be honest? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm looking. I'm looking at homeschool options. Okay. I'm looking at homeschool options. Okay. All right. So um, I did do. Wake County sent out a big questionnaire about, uh, you know, for parents, what do you feel? How do you feel about this? And I was able the the app that they used allowed you to read responses from other parents, and I was actually shocked at the number of parents that were like, "I don't think masks should be necessary at school." That was like yeah. a big thing. Um, yeah, I see you, Tamisha. Yeah, I'm gonna have to keep these kids home for the rest of 2020. I can't yeah. do it. <laughs> they were like, I don't think it should be a big thing. And it wasn't even like, you know, my child has a condition and I'm concerned about them being able to breathe, which is a thing. And obviously there are gonna be exceptions to every rule. I get that. But this was more like, I just feel like a kindergartner is going to be scared seeing people in masks and I don't want my child to be afraid and I want my child to be able to interact and express joy and happiness on their face. And I was just like, what kind of mess is this? I'm not giving Zay any vaccine. I hear you, Autumn. And it's concerning too, you know, the, the pros and cons of vac the vaccine that they're coming out with fairly, fairly quickly. I I can't trust people with the health of my kids no. i would just leave it at that I, yeah. i'm not going to trust them with the health of my children absolutely oh so i'm i don't know hubby i don't know if you knew that but i, I am looking at the whole school <laughs> like you can do what you want me and my kids yeah. gonna be over here we're gonna be safe all right well cool wow. i'm so, I, I, i'll keep checking in with you on that and i think that it's going to be um i think it's going to be a very emotional controversial subject for a lot of parents um, when it yeah. comes time to go back to school. I think that, you know, and we talked about this several weeks ago, that they should probably have an option. Um, she said we can take Lysol pills like Trump suggested. That's why, that's why, why she not? said don't listen. That's why she said don't listen to Autumn because Autumn be listening to Trump. Because the population <laughs> controls this. Girl, You're trying to control trying the population. Okay. Um, <laughs> but I think it's going to be interesting to see how that on all unfolds and especially with wake county because wake county is the largest um is the largest school system in the state and i think that what we do probably a lot of other people are going to are going to emulate so it should be it should be good 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. USC has a vaccine. Let's, okay. Let's talk. Let's come back, Tracy. Let's come back next time, and we'll we'll start with vaccines because y'all have a lot of good vaccine like comments and questions. And I have friends that are in the pharmaceutical business and work in the research business. And um, a black female physician from North Carolina is heading the the movement toward this the research that we have going on. So I'm going to do as much research as I can, and we're, let's start off with vaccines next time, and let's talk about off. the pros and cons. Wait, we'll start off with vaccines in schools. I won't save school for school. the last time for you. The you juicy stuff in the front. Yeah, you and Rick will have had more time to talk about your plans for school. Yeah, now that he school. knows. Now he knows. Well, look, we, we all know your plan. We know where you at. Okay. Because, you know, you you don't want your children around those parents that are like, I don't want Johnny to wear a mask because he might be afraid. Whatever. Yeah. Mm. Thank you, Doc Swiner, as always. I appreciate you sharing your knowledge um, and uh, and your thoughts on everything that's happening. And I guess I got to go check in with Roy now and see what, what he's talking about. Because yeah. it seemed like every press conference they had last week was like worser and worser and worser and worser. And then he was he like, the- y'all... He's like, y'all gonna get it. Y'all gonna get it. Okay. Okay. Y'all gonna get it. I don't think he's playing with us. I really he's don't. He's not playing so, with y'all. He's so not. I need, to, I need to go review what happened today. With I don't know if the conference has happened yet, but I'm not trying to go back into lockdown. So I have to say. All right. All right. Autumn Joy, I love you. Oh, uh, <laughs> she's looking for the uh, the autumn. I was looking for the pills. Okay. Oh God! Do Lysol. not we love ingest her. Lysol. Do do not ingest Lysol or Clorox. If, if you didn't hear me say anything else to say, or Clorox. But what okay. about light? Can we just swallow light? Because the light can kill. It. No. Okay. All right. Thank you, Doctor Swiner. We'll talk to you uh, next time. <laughs> I'm gonna do everything I can if uh, Instagram lets me to post this. I'm gonna try to send it to Doctor Swiner so she can post it, and then I'll post it on our IGTV. Thank you guys for joining us. And uh, we'll talk to Doc Swiner again probably next week. All right. Love y'all. Be safe. All right.